with great pleasure that I introduce our speaker this evening. Virginia Maher has been here for quite some time. I will not tell you how long. She is an art historian. She's a fourth generation descendant of a pioneering Ephraim family. Gotta love that, that's the Ephraim Foundation. She grew up in Whitefish Bay outside of Milwaukee. She has lived in Evanston and Glencoe, Illinois for almost three decades. And since 2002, has been a permanent resident of Door County with her husband, who is a retired architect, Tom Maher. Virginia studied art history at Loyola University in Chicago and received an MA in art history from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. She is listed in Who's Who in America. She is a curator, a lecturer, and a writer. She's a recipient of the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee's GOLD, graduate of the last decade, if I love that. <laughs> award in 2000, and she is the author of The Spirit of the Times, American Arts and Crafts Furniture, and numerous articles and papers on American art and architecture. I think she knows a lot about what she's going to talk about. She serves as curator and director of the Madeline Turlow Archives and Study Center at the Peninsula School of Art right here in Fish Creek. And she co-authored the book, Madeline Turtleau, Remembered. If you haven't seen the book yet, get it. It's really great. Her next latest book is Selected Artists of Door County, and it will be published and out within 30 days, so watch for it. So please help me welcome Virginia Marker. <laughs> Thank you, Linda, and thank you all for coming this evening on this hot night, but it's nice and comfortable in here. Um, I'm going to be talking about Madeline Turtle. Can you all hear me? A little lower? A little more? Okay, is that better? Okay. Um, Madeline Turtle, I, ha I, have n I have notes because I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to forget things, so I always write my lectures out. Um, Madeline Turnwell's life revolved around art. She was a multi-talented artist. She did, she's best known for her fine art films and for impressionist paintings, as well as screen print fabrics and silver jewelry, which she made, and photography. Um, she was definitely a patron of the arts in Door County. She supported the Peninsula Players. She even had a little starring role back in the 30s in the Peninsula Players. And she uh, supported the music festival. And most important of all, she founded the Peninsula School of Art in 1965. So tonight, I would like to talk about five aspects of her life. And I've divided my lecture up into five parts. The first part is her early years and her background. And then I'm going to talk about her connection to Ephraim, which is important to this group and all of us and her art career in Chicago in the 1930s and 40s. And then I'm going to talk about um, the Peninsula School of Art years in the 60s and 70s when she started it and when she ran the school then. And then finally, I'm going to talk about Madeline's legacy. Um, Mad not this, I'm talking starting with her early years. Madeline was born Madeline Hansen in Berkeley, California, November 21st, 1915. Very little is known about her early years um, or her parents. Her father's name was Alex McClure Hansen. He was from Chicago. Her, Madeline lived with her birth parents, we don't even know her mother's name, and her older sister Lois with, for four years. Then their parents separated and divorced and Madeline and her sister were shipped across the country, halfway across the country, to Chicago, where they moved in and were adopted later by her father's sister, her, the girl's aunt, and who was also named Madeline, Madeline McClure Hansen, and her husband, Chester Tripp, a successful mining engineer and inventor. Madeline and her sister Lois were welcomed into the trip home on 1404 Forest Avenue in Evanston, Illinois, 
uh, where they grew up in a life of privilege and culture, the, the parents had a, a beautiful home. This is their home on Forest Avenue, and they had three servants and a chauffeur. So when young Madeline showed an interest in any cultural activity, she had a lot of lessons. And she, um, early on, she became interested in art, and she had every opportunity to develop her skills. She studied to become a talented artist, a, 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 an accomplished musician and pianist, and she even played in Chicago um, later on in her uh, young adult life. She played in, on Rush Street in some of the bars. She played the piano. Um, and she studied, she was fluent in French and Spanish. Um, Madeline attended Royce Moore School, a private girls' school. All the schools she went to were girls' schools, except for Northwestern University. She attended Royce Moore Private Girls School on the Northwestern University campus in Evanston. And then this, um, this is Royce Moore School. It was actually, um, it's, a, it's a, on historic preservation now. It's back part of the university at Northwestern. But it was de designed by a, a well-known Chicago architect and it was done in the prairie style. So it was a very open building inside. It was very innovative for the day and the time. And so that she went there, and then she uh, went to the Shipley Prep School for Girls at Bryn Mawr in Pennsylvania for high school, and she attended Smith College in Massachusetts for one year. Um, now we're going to move on to the second aspect, Ephraim. Uh, Door County and Ephraim played an important and a significant role in Madeline's life for over 70 years. She began spending summer, she was born in 1915, I said earlier, and so in the early 20s, she began coming to Door County with her parents, her adopted parents, the Tripps. In the 1930s, the Tripp family purchased property on North Shore Road in Ephraim, which is um, included this log home near the shore. Oh, and this, this, this included this guest house, which is up near the road, but also a log house near the shore, which is now longer there. But the guest, the guest house near the road on North Shore Road is still there. Um, as a teenager, Madeline took classes, art classes, by Art Institute of Chicago professor Vladimir Rousseff on the porch of the White Gull Inn in Fish Creek. So she enjoyed her, she enjoyed her family time. In, in, and after her parents died, Madeline took over the property. And her, and her sister eventually went back to California and Madeline stayed in the Midwest. And Madeline took over this property and she kept it until the mid to late 90s. So she had it for a long time. So Ephraim was really a significant part of her life and she loved it. Um, this is Madeline's first husband, Edward Turtolo. Um, in 1934, the Chicago Tribune printed Madeline's engagement announcement. I'd like to read it. Miss Madeline Burton Tripp, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Chester D. Tripp Evanston, to Edward M. Turtolo, Jr., son of Edward Turtolo of Chicago. Mr. Turtolo was graduated from the architectural school at Cornell University in 1931. The wedding will take place Easter, Sun, Easter week. Miss Tripp is the granddaughter of the late Mr. and Mrs. Burton Hansen of Chicago and has one sister who now lives in Berkeley, California. Um, when she was 19 years old, after one year of college, Madeline married the 27-year-old Edward Turtolo. He was best known as Ned. If some of you knew the Turtolos up here, he was really always referred to as, as Ted. Um, the couple had two children, Edward Jr., born 1936, and Joan, born 1938. They lived at 2719 Sheridan Road in Evanston, just north of the Northwestern campus. And Madeline and the children spent their summers in Door County in Ephraim. Um, this is the Ephraim Boathouse building. It's right across the street from the Anderson store. In, that, in the 1940s, Madeline and her mother gave scholarships to Art Institute students, in Ch our Chicago Art Institute students, to teach art in Ephraim, along with a couple of the art professors from the Art Institute. Classes were held in the boathouse, and the building is still there, as you know. It's one big room with a pine floor and lots of wall space to hang paintings for display. Art lessons cost $1 a day, 
and classes were held all summer. Um, the Boathouse Art School was suspended at the end of 1941 because of World War II, after the U.S. entered the war. In 1943, Madeline, still wanting to start an art school, founded the Ephraim Art School in a little house on County Q behind the Anderson Hotel. I don't have a picture of that, and I'm not sure which house it is. Um, can you hear me in the back? OK, good, because I keep going in and out. I don't know. Um, the, the, the school that she started in 1943 had a, had a fairly substantial um, curriculum. There was etching, engraving, and screen printing, three types of printing. There was painting and watercolors and oil, and crayon and ink drawing. Classes were held during the summers from 1943 until 1949. One of the teachers was Claude Bentley, that's a well-known name here in Ephraim, um, from the Art Institute of Chicago who was known for his abstract and impressionistic paintings. Uh, next, I would like to look at her Chicago art career. It was in the 30s and 40s that Madeline really made quite a name for herself in Chicago in the art world. Um, here she is in a rather dramatic pose. <laughs> um, she, uh, Madeline took art classes at the Art Institute in Chicago. She studied photography and filmmaking at the Illinois Institute of Design, which had been founded in the 1937 by faculty who had been re had relocated from the Bauhaus School in Germany. So it was a very it was a very modernistic style of photography that they were featuring there and design. And Madeline, she really loved all the modern art and she loved the modern styles. So she was into that. Um, then that school, when the, when the Bauhaus was closed by the Nazis, then those professors came over to Chicago. They looked around the world and where they were going to go. Some of them, like Joseph Albers, went to Black Mountain College in, in uh, North Carolina, and others came to Chicago, and they started the Illinois Institute of Technology. Um, additionally, Madeline studied journalism at Northwestern University, and she worked as an art critic for the Chicago American newspaper for several years. Some of her artwork that we're going to look at from her art career in Chicago, this is Bend in the River, an oil on canvas. Um, <clears throat> it was exhibited at the Art Institute of Chicago in 1955. The painting was influenced by Madeline's love of French Impressionism. Bend in the River is painted in a cool color palette of blues and greens. Um, there's some black and white and a little red in it. And um, her thick application of paint is it produced a very dense impasto, which is a, a buildup of paint on the surface of the canvas, and blurred imagery and reflections in the river. This painting is available for you to see at the archive, so I'll get to that later. Um, this is some more of her. The other thing that she liked was uh, uh, screen printing. Much of her artwork was inspired by nature and the natural world around her. Her films, her art, her photography, she really, she really captured nature. She loved it. She frequently used images of ferns, Queen Anne's lace, and other leaves and plants in her screen prints. She made her own silk screens and printed fabrics on them. Her fabrics were sewn into articles of clothing, even a wedding dress. Someone had a wedding dress made out of Madeline's fern fabrics. Um, a 1950 art review in the Chicago Sunday Tribune said this about her, quote, Miss Turtolo is well known in Chicago. Her work is modern in character, but not unpleasant modern. <laughs> and her designs for fabrics often are beautiful. She is a creative artist, and her work in silk screens is particularly distinguished. Her use of color and line, her flair for design, make little masterpieces of the simplest scarves. So she was really gaining a reputation. She, she operated a gallery in Chicago, her own gallery, and she also exhibited at many other galleries. This is um, photography was a real, a real important medium for Madeline. She studied with mid-century avant-garde photographers Paul Caponegro and Minor White, who are very well-known names in the photography world of the mid-century. And, and much of Madeline's art photography also focused on nature. She captured rocks and waves and waterfalls and, and, and leaves and seed pods and all kinds of natural forms. These are milkweed pods. 
in black and white photography. She worked in black and white photography and color photography. I personally think the black and white is much more dramatic and effective in the work that she did. She sold some of, on the backs of some of these pieces, we found them, and on the backs of them they say, the Hardy Gallery, it was exhibited at the Hardy Gallery, and maybe it was uh, for sale for um, $25. So it was kind of fun to have that from the, from the 50s and 60s. Uh, this is another photograph of seed pods, and here she's presenting them in a way that allows them to be abstract forms isolated from their context in nature. Um, this is a painting that she did, a very expressionistic style painting with expressionistic colors of Albert Zahn's house, the bird house in Bailey's Harbor. Madeline was kind of fascinated with him. She wrote an article about him for the Door County Advocate and she, um, she, took, she photographed him and she photographed, he died in 1953, and she photographed him and she also photographed his, his artwork, which is folk art. And um, Zahn turned his home and yard into a total folk art in, environment with his hand carved and painted birds. He had birds, deers, angels, family trees, and, and she, she was just fascinated by him. And his, um, she then painted this enchanting and expressive painting, I think is quite wonderful. This is Flower in the Sun, another painting by Madeline. Um, this is it's a, a very expressionistic painting again. It may have well been a personal symbol for Madeline. The painting was still hanging in prominently on the wall in her Door County studio years after she left. This painting was exhibited by the Arts Club in Chicago in 1960. Um, Madeline was best known, I think she's critically best known for her films, her art films in the 1950s. And art films were a, a genre of, of art that was produced by filmmakers and, and it, some of the films were five minutes, some of them were 15, some of them were 30, and they were experimental and they were shown at art film festivals around the world and they were also there were art film societies who would watch these films. I wasn't familiar with any of this, and, but it was, it's, it's, so it's interesting to me to learn about it. Here's a young uh, Madeline behind the camera. Um, Madeline considered film the art movement, the art medium of the 20th century. She said, film involves time, speed, psychological depth, all the things the 20th century stands for or stood for. Um, Madeline became fascinating with filmmaking in 1947 while she was on a vacation in Mexico. She had a chance encounter with a film crew making a movie based on John Steinbeck's story, The Pearl. 32-year-old um, Madeline met Steinbeck and was invited to observe the filming and production of the movie. Inspired by what she saw, Madeline began making 16-millimeter art films on the subjects of art, literature, and music which she presented at international film festivals, and semi-documentary films, which she showed on public television in Chicago, WTTW. Um, Madeline's films were distributed by the Cinema 16 Film Library at Grove Press in New York. This is a catalog that they put out, um, which it's an illustrated catalog, which has photos of the films and the actors. And it describes Madeline's films, which were available for rental or purchase by schools, universities, and the public. This is an example of one of her films, Rotate the Body. Um, she presented her films in the festivals from New York to San Francisco, from Scotland and Ireland to Brussels and Czechoslovakia. This film was accepted, and this is the acceptance notice that it was accepted into the Edinburgh Festival in Scotland, and it was also shown later in New York and Czechoslovakia. <clears throat> uh, Rotate the Body, the film that we're talking about, was done, it was this a nine minute color film, 16 millimeters, of a gymnasia, gymnastics meet at the University of Illinois in Champaign, Urbana. Um, it has a musical soundtrack by experimental musician Harry Parch. And in the film, the action is slowed down. It was very experimental and very artsy. 
the action was slowed down, it was speeded up, it was sometimes she filmed upside down, and, um, and films were, it was sometimes it was reversed and going backwards. And a gymnastics meet was a perfect, it had so much action going on, you can picture them jumping across the mats and, and all their moves, and she, she captured it all. So it's a wonderful nine minute film. Um, here she is on location filming in Mexico. The New York Times film critic, a New York Times film critic, I don't have his name, wrote in 1959 that Madeline had, quote, striking talent and definitely bears watching. So, let's take a minute here. Okay, 19, all the time that Madeline was pursuing her art career in Chicago in the 40s and 50s, and 60s, she never gave up the idea of a professional art school in Door County. In 1964, Madeline started the Door Harbor School of Art in the basement of the Gibraltar High School with Ted Cranick, a sculptor and university professor from Milwaukee. Uh, one year later, in 1965, when she was 50 years old, Madeline purchased three and a half acres in Fish Creek to start the Peninsula School of Arts. The school was originally affiliated with the University of Wisconsin system. Um, professors came from Milwaukee and Green Bay branches in order to give classes offered by college professors and for college <coughs> credit. Um, this is the school, the original, it's a photograph of the original building, and I'm sure a lot of you have been to the art school and the driveway doesn't look anything like this anymore. And, um, but these school buildings were designed in a rural barn-like style and design by Madeline's husband, Chicago architect, Edward Turtolo. This is the original administration building. It was the hub of the complex at the school. Um, it contained the school office, a dark room for developing photography, and a gallery to exhibit artwork created at the school, as well as a personal studio for Madeline in the back, which is now a children's classroom. And that's where you're taking a class, my grandson here tonight, eight-year-old Brendan. <laughs> Um, they, uh, there, there were two large classroom buildings. There's still one at the school, one burned down, unfortunately. And um, one of the buildings, one of the, one of the large, large classroom buildings was used for photography, silk screening, and painting, and the other was for sculpture and jewelry. There was also a separate ceramic studio and kiln. Um, the Peninsula Art School began as a summer colony. It was situated in, I'm going to go back to this. It was situated, you can, see the, the, you can see the two people sitting on the porch. That's Madeline and one of the artists in residence. And there, it, it was just out in the fields, and there were beautiful trees. It was, Door County is such a, our, our beautiful Door County served as a retreat from the everyday world for artists. They pro, it provided artists with a place and time for creative pursuits and the opportunity to exchange ideas and collaborate with other artists, which was very important to them. Um, the school was a lively blend of intense artistic creativity combined with lively social occasions. There were lots of parties, apparently. Um, resident artists, painters, sculptors, ceramic artists, and jewelry artists, bookmakers making books, um, glass blowers, and printmakers flourished in this vibrant environment which supported meaningful art and lifelong friendships. Um, it, I have talked to so many people who were artists here in in the 60s, and, and they just looked back on it as, they were young, they had just got, gotten out of college, and they were very idealistic, and they were arts artists, and they just, they loved the time they spent there. And Madeline was so generous, she provided housing for many of them. She was a very generous person. Um, in 1965, classes were offered in sculpture, painting, graphics, pottery, and metalwork. Tuition was $3 per class, with a minimum of one week. Uh, materials were an extra charge. Um, housing was arranged um, it, by, in local hotels and motels or through the Chamber of Commerce in Sturgeon Bay, but um, for the professors and the teachers, um, Madeline helped them out. She helped them out with the stipend and housing stipend, and some people stayed in her house. She had, she had three houses on her property, and so some people stayed there. Here's Madeline, uh, the director of the art school. She found, um, she, 
uh, a former artist in residence spoke of Madeline's um, impact on the art school. He said, this was Bruce Grimes from, he's now in Ohio, he said, Madeline was the very spirit that encouraged total artistic freedom in an environment ideally developed for creative thought and action. Madeline was not just director of Peninsula School of Art, she was the patron for the arts throughout Door County. In addition to directing the art school, Madeline found time to continue creating her own her own art. She made paintings, jewelry, prints, photographs, silkscreen fabrics, and films. This is a, called Winter Orchard. It's one of the Door County Cherry Orchards. Um, in 1970, Madeline started a program at the art school called The Studios, an artist grant program which gave a stipend and studio space to artists to con concentrate on specific areas of study. In 1971, for financial reasons, forced Madeline to close the Peninsula School of Arts, but she continued to support her artist in residence art colony program. In 19, that ran until 1978. In 1978, Madeline retired from her active role at the art school. She donated half of the three and a half acre property along with $3,000 seed money to the Peninsula Arts Association to open and administer a newly structured art school. So Madeline retired and she still had her studio in Fish Creek and she had her home in Ephraim and she came up here and um, it, it, she spent her final years from 1978 till she died um, back and forth and then after a while she had a stroke and then she didn't come back up here anymore but she still thought of it longingly I've, I've been told. Um, this is Takashi Yamada or Kash, he's, he's well known and he is a former ceramic artist in residence at the school. Um, he and Matt Kosh and Madeline developed a special relationship and after the death of her first husband in 1983, uh, they, Kosh and Madeline lived together in Wilmette, Illinois and up here in Ephraim and they were married later a few years before she died in 2002. Kosh is still alive, he was 30 years younger than Madeline and we've met him and he is um, he's just a very charming person and he's still making pottery, although not as much. Um, he's a very well-known potter up here. Um, wait, what happened? I miss, miss something. Something's missing. Okay. Um, well, these are, this is a painting by um, Jim Ingerson of Madeline in her later years, and it was a, he painted this uh, just within the last six years, and he painted it from a photograph. So she, she, was, she was still making art, and she still enjoyed doing that. Um, I'll, here is the uh, Madeline and her first husband's headstones at the, um, they're both buried, Madeline Tur Tripp Turtolo and Edward M. Turtolo, buried together in the Ephraim Moravian Church Cemetery um, behind the church. Um, although Madeline's life ended in 2012, 2002, her story doesn't end there. <laughs> uh, we still have a little more to tell about. We'll talk about her legacy. Uh, Madison, Madeline, Madeline's legacy lives on at the Madeline Ar Turtolo Archives and Study Center at the Peninsula School of Art in Fish Creek. Um, the archives opened in 2008. We saw this building before. This was the original administrative building for the school. That was then, this is now. This is how it looks now. Um, the archives opened in 2008. Um, this is, um, the mission of the archives is to preserve and exhibit artwork and historical artifacts from the earliest days of the school. Currently, the archives occupies three rooms where paintings, photography, Art films, sculpture, ceramics, and jewelry by Madeline and former artists in residence, faculty and students are exhibited. Historical ar artifacts include photo albums, catalogs, newspaper clippings, and publications. Um, it is, we called it the Madeline Turtle Archives and Study Center. Um, the archives is a play, it is a research um, tool. It's a place to study Madeline's work and those of her contemporaries. Within the last two years, Ephraim's own Paul Burton extensively researched the archives. He spent a summer there 
uh, every Wednesday coming and, and going through all the files and all the uh, information. He studied the films, the artwork, and um, he, it served as a basis for a book he wrote about Madeline. Um, the book is titled Madeline Turtle Will Remember. It's a biography telling the story of her life through interviews with contemporaries who knew, who knew her, um, who knew Madeline well. He interviewed a lot of people and he did a lot of research on Ancestry.com and that's how he got the beginning information about her life, although it, was not, it, was, it wasn't too fruitful. Um, and, and there's a lot of uh, vintage photographs and discussions about her art films and paintings. And um, we, have a, we have a copy of the book over here. I'll talk about it a little later. Um, th back to the archives. This is a shelf with some of the artists. We have a collection of Madeline's art books in there. The art school has its own library, but these are all Madeline's personal collection of art books, which we kept together. Um, and we have, uh, we have sculpture, we have metal paintings, which you see on the wall here, and ceramics. Um, this is the film, this is the media film room. This was the original dark room, but we've converted it into a room, a media room where we can show Madeline's films. We have DVD copies of her films, and people come to view them. And we even had a student from uh, uh, the School of the Art Institute who was a film, film student, and she was going to be writing a book on women filmmakers in Chicago in the 50s. And she came up and reviewed all of Madeline's films, so that was exciting for me. Um, this is the archives office. This summer, the office is featuring an exhibit of Albert, Ed, and Randy Zahn folk art because it has a lot of windows and you really can't put artwork, you can put watercolors or paintings in there because of the sunlight, but it's perfect for sculpture. Um, uh, this is a, the archives is open on Wednesdays from 10 to 2 or by appointment from May to October and I invite you to all come and visit. It's a little historical museum as well as a study center. In conclusion, I would like to sum up Madeline Turtleau and her life. Um, she was, Madeline Turtleau was a kind and sociable person. She enjoyed entertaining and visiting with friends. Here she's sitting on the shore of her home in Ephraim. She loved her home and she loved Ephraim. This, we have a lot of photographs in the archives and Madeline is sitting on the left and a friend of hers who we have not been able to identify. So if anybody in this group knows who this woman is. I think by the clothing, I'm guessing this is the 50s. It just looks like with the cardigan sweaters and the, you know, the, the skirts and the, it just looks like the 50s. I don't know who that woman is on the right. So if anybody knows, please let me know. Um, Madeline was so well known for her artwork. Her life revolved around art. She studied art, made art, wrote about art, exhibited art, and facilitated and encouraged other artists in their creative pursuits. Madeline's films were combined visual images of nature with words of poetry and sounds of music to create moving pictures filled with beauty and emotion. This is the photograph that we started with. Um, this is a photo of Madeline from the 50s, circa 1958. It's from the Man Ray Photography Archives at the Pompidou Museum of Art in Paris, France. The photo is included in a, uh, a catalog raisonné that they did of the Man Ray Photography uh, Archives at the Pompidou Museum in 2010. It was funny because they, they received all of Man Ray's, a very famous American photographer who had a studio in Paris for most of the 20th century. And, and they, the Pompidou Museum, the Modern Art Museum in Paris, had acquired all his negatives. And they, this one was labeled Madeleine Turtleau. They had no idea who they had because a lot of his a lot of the people that he photographed were Coco Chanel, Pablo Picasso, sort of anybody who was anybody in the early 20th century in the art world in Paris. And so they had Madeline Turlo, and so they Googled Madeline Turlo, and they got Peninsula School of Art, Fish Creek. They emailed, and one thing led to another, and we sent them information, and she was in the book. So, so it's kind of fun. The book is at, we do have a copy of the book at the archives and, and it's available for research and, and actually it's a very charming book.
But I particularly like this photograph, por portrait of Madeline, because I think it defines her perfectly. Madeline was determined. I think you see all these characteristics in this photograph. She was determined, she was confident, she was independent, she was modern, she was generous, she was sometimes controversial, and she was always stunning. So thank you for your interest. I do hope you'll visit the archives. It's a little museum, and, and, um, and the, the book, I have a copy of it here. The book, the book that Paul Burton wrote last year, he wrote it for the 50th anniversary of the art school, which was last year. And it's a biography, and it is $20. He, after he wrote the book, he donated the book to the art school. He donated 450 copies to the art school to sell for the preservation of the archives and for the, for the school. And this, the book is available at the school. We are not a lot, we were going, we wanted to bring some copies to night, but we're not allowed to do that in the village hall. So, uh, but I am allowed to talk about the book. And so, um, it's, it's a wonderful book. book and it talks about her films. It talks in depth about her films and her artwork and there's, um, and, and, and of course her life. And um, so, it's available. And then we have a copy up here that you can thumb through and look at it. If you're interested, it's available at the art school and it's available at the archives, which is open every Wednesday during the season from 10 to 2. So now I want to ask you if you have any questions or comments. Yes? I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Thank you for the work you've done in preserving the legacy of Madeline Journal. We spent an enjoyable Wednesday two weeks ago with your husband uh, uh, going through the archives and seeing the uh, Zahn exhibit. What a delightful place. Thank you for all the work you've done. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I, ha I have a question. Did any of you know Madeline personally? You did. No, the original guest house is there. The log house down by the shore is gone. Well, the studio is there, but the one by the road is gone. They had to take it out because they couldn't cover, too much of the lot was covered. So the guest house that was right by the road is gone. The little stone house? No, the log, well, the little house right by the road is gone. The little house by the road was the log house. Yeah. I mean, there was a stone house. Well, the one by the road is gone. Okay. They taken out in the last few years. Okay, all right. Well, but did you did you meet Madeline then when you were there? Yes, I did, but I was fairly young. Okay. But she was a very strong personality. Yes. No yes. Yes. Well, you should you might want to come into the archives because we have a lot of photographs of students and classes that were going on. She went around campus and, and photographed all the students, so you might be in some of our photographs. So, any other comments or? Questions or? What was her association with Albert Zahn? It's an interesting question. What was her association with Albert Zahn? It's an interesting question because Madeline was striving so hard to have quality art education in Door County, educated artists, educated people, and Albert Zahn was a totally uneducated artist. He was a folk artist. So it was kind of a juxtaposition there, but I think she she admired his creative spirit. She admired what was coming from his heart because I think his art was very sincere, and and it it wasn't you know. So I think she admired him, and I, I think she just thought he was quite a character. I, I would imagine. She I, because she wrote an article for the Door County Advocate and was very complimentary of his work. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Well, thank you very much for coming tonight, and please do stop at the archives. Oh, another question? I was wondering what time period was she at Northwestern, and uh, was she in a particular program, or was she a part of a graduate school? No. She, as I said earlier, she went to one year of college at Smith, and then she got married at, ni at 19, so she was very young. And in those days, in 1934, you know, if you were getting married, there was no 
reason for you to continue on with your college education. And so she, but she was always intrigued and she, she, I think may, she may have subconsciously missed the fact that she, you know, didn't continue her college education. So she took classes in the areas that she really liked. She studied art at the Art Institute and she studied journalism at Northwestern. And that was probably in the early, late 30s, early 40s. And my question to you, have you checked the archives at Northwestern to see what her application had on it? No, why, have you? <laughs> no, I haven't, but I have done it for several other people and I know who the archivist is up there. Oh. Afterwards, oh. So you might consider looking into that. Thank you, that would be wonderful. You might find out some things about her early life there. Yes, well she was, she was, she, she was, uh, um, she had two children, but she was well to do and so she had help, I'm sure, and she had freedom and time that she could go and take classes and pursue her interests. And um, that doesn't denigrate her what she was doing as a mother because she was up here with her children every summer and, and, and elsewhere, I, I don't know the whole story, but anyway, she did have time to do that and I don't think she was ever a full-time student as you know a sophomore at Northwestern or a junior I think she just took the classes that she wanted to take yes you have to apply and the archivist there would have the applications Yes. oh I'll check into that okay that's good good tip thank you thank you any other questions comments Does Brendan have a question <laughs> Do you have a question, Brendan? Brendan has a comment. What is your comment, sweetie? I missed the lecture. Oh, he liked the lecture. Thank you. <laughs> He's a little partial. 